Number 7. King Maha Vajiralongkorn Following his ascension to the throne in 2016, the Thai king, Maha Vajiralongkorn, made a number of fundamental changes to the nation's monarchy that afforded him far more power and influence than his predecessors. Prior to his father's death, Vajiralongkorn had already garnered a reputation as a reckless playboy, whom many felt lacked the dignity and sense of morality that is expected of the king in Thai culture. Citizens were therefore concerned that the then crown prince would make a mockery of the throne once he finally ascended to it. Those fears were further cemented when Vajira Longkorn appeared in a viral Facebook video in which he was captured casually strolling through a shopping mall with a woman believed to be his mistress. After his coronation, Vajira Longkorn introduced major changes to the Thai constitution, modifications that gave him emergency powers and made it possible for him to exert his authority even when he's out of the country. He also took personal control of the estimated $43 billion in royal assets that the Crown Property Bureau had previously managed on behalf of the Thai king for several generations. Vajira Longkorn's radical power grab continued when he arranged for units of the Thai army to report directly to him rather than to their commanding officers. The people of Thailand not only took issue with Vajira Longkorn's authoritarian tendencies, but also with his apparent disregard for long-standing cultural practices. The king reportedly named the woman who'd appeared in the shopping mall video as his royal concubine, in spite of the fact that he was already married. The decision was met with particular outrage given that polygamy had been outlawed in Thailand since 1935. Nationwide protests broke out in early 2020 during which hundreds of thousands of demonstrators demanded reforms to the Thai monarchy. Vajira Longkorn had reportedly rented out a resort hotel in Germany for himself and his associates at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. He remained there in the midst of the burgeoning protests, which as of the latest updates on the situation were still ongoing. Number 6. Princess Anne In November of 2002, Princess Anne became the first member of the British royal family to be convicted of a criminal offence. Her charges stemmed from an incident that had occurred on April the 1st of that same year, two days after the death of Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, her grandmother. Anne and her husband, Tim Lawrence, had reportedly been on a walk with their three English bull terriers in the park around Windsor Castle. They were walking near the dividing line between the public and private sections of the grounds when a pair of young boys approached them on their bicycles. Court records detailed how one of the dogs then charged the children and knocked them to the ground. One of the victims reportedly suffered cuts on his legs and collarbone, while the other was left with scratches on his arms. Neither of them sustained any serious injuries, but the family of the boys claimed that they had nightmares about the incident for several months after the fact and had even developed a fear of all dogs as a direct consequence of the attack. Both the princess and her husband entered guilty pleas and they were consequently ordered to pay $395 in compensation to the victims. Number 5. Prince Saud bin Abdulaziz bin Musaid bin Saud bin Abdulaziz Al Saud in the summer of 2017, Saudi Arabia's Prince Saud Al Saud was taken into police custody in the capital city of Riyadh following the release of a disturbing video in which he was shown physically and verbally assaulting civilians. A warrant for his arrest was issued by King Salman himself, who was said to have been appalled by the abusive behavior exhibited throughout the clip in question. In addition to the prince, several other unnamed assailants appeared in the footage and they were each placed under arrest as well. The viral video depicted a man who was later identified as Prince Al Saud repeatedly punching a male citizen in the head until the victim's face was covered in his own blood. In a later clip, Al Saud was shown waving a gun in the direction of civilians while hurling verbal abuse at them. Other portions of the video depicted similar examples of violence and aggression perpetrated against defenseless people by the prince's associates. The recording triggered an overwhelmingly negative reaction from the majority of the Saudi people who were angered by the prince's actions and eager to see him punished for his unruly behavior. The king decreed that none of the suspects would be released until the testimonies of each victim had been heard and an official court ruling had been made. Number 4. King Abdullah II Abdullah II bin Al Hussein, whose reign as the King of Jordan began in 1999, became the subject of extensive criticism after reports surfaced that he'd laundered $106 million 
through secret offshore companies. He allegedly used the hidden wealth to purchase a collection of luxury properties located primarily in the US and UK. The long-running monarch's corrupt dealings were described in great detail in financial documents leaked by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. Between 2003 and 2017, Abdullah II reportedly bought a total of 14 vacation homes through shell companies registered in tax havens like Switzerland and the Caribbean. Among the opulent homes purchased by the Jordanian king were three adjoining beachfront properties at Point Doom in California, as well as multi-million dollar apartments in central London and Washington, D.C. It was alleged that Abdullah II's personal advisors had created various front companies on his behalf in an effort to keep his name out of public records. The leaked documents were met with outrage by the Jordanian people, many of whom participated in protests against corruption within the monarchy back in 2018. Abdullah II's excessive wealth proved particularly scandalous given the fact that Jordan is one of the poorest countries in its region and has relied heavily on foreign aid to support its people. Number 3. King Juan Carlos I After abdicating the Spanish throne in favor of his son in 2014, former King Juan Carlos I left the country and went into a self-imposed exile due to mounting accusations of financial impropriety. Juan Carlos's public reputation had begun to erode in April of 2012, after it emerged that he'd taken an elephant hunting trip to Botswana while the country was struggling to cope with a financial crisis. In June of 2014, he officially stepped down as the King of Spain, but he continued to have a role as an institutional representative until his self-described retirement from public life in 2019. The following year, Juan Carlos's financial affairs became the subject of an international investigation. The former monarch was alleged to have taken part in corrupt business dealings involving the construction of the Haramain High Speed Railway in Saudi Arabia during the late 2000s. It later emerged that Juan Carlos had received millions of dollars in kickback fees from commercial contracts in the Gulf states, all of which he'd allegedly flowed into a Swiss bank account in order to avoid being taxed. In March of 2020, Juan Carlos was stripped of his annual stipend by his son, Felipe VI, and in August, the former king began his self-exile. Subsequent updates on the matter suggested that Juan Carlos's exact whereabouts remained unknown, although it's been speculated that he could be in the United Arab Emirates. Today's topic was requested by Alicia Murder. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Prince Andrew Queen Elizabeth II's third child, Prince Andrew, became the focus of extensive controversy in 2015 after a Florida court filing alleged that he'd abused a 17-year-old girl. Prior to the onset of the international scandal, Andrew's public image had largely been built around his decorated services a helicopter pilot in the Royal Navy. He was created Duke of York in 1986 when he married Sarah Ferguson, whom he divorced 10 years later. At the turn of the century, he reportedly became the UK's Special Representative for International Trade and Investment, a position he held until his termination in 2011. Around that time, Andrew had become the subject of widespread criticism stemming from his public association with American businessman and convicted felon Jeffrey Epstein, in late December of 2014, a federal lawsuit filed in the United States implicated the prince in an alleged human trafficking ring headed by Epstein. Court documents revealed the latter had had a teenager named Virginia Gouffre under his control. She would later claim to have been assaulted by Prince Andrew on three separate occasions in 2001. The lawsuit, which was extensively covered by international media, heightened public pressure for officials at Buckingham Palace to provide an explanation for Andrew's controversial friendship with Epstein. In an interview with BBC, which occurred in November of 2019, the prince outright denied the allegations of misconduct and defended his connection to Epstein by claiming that their friendship had been very useful to him over the years. In August of 2021, Gouffre filed a civil lawsuit against Prince Andrew for the alleged assault and what she described as an intentional infliction of emotional distress. The disgraced prince resigned from all public roles in 2020 and Queen Elizabeth II removed his honorary military affiliations and royal charitable patronages in January of 2022.
Number one, the Nepalese Royal Massacre. On June the 1st of 2001, nine members of the Nepalese royal family, including King Birendra and Queen Aishwarya, were gunned down at the Narayanhiti Palace. According to eyewitness testimony, the shooting had erupted during a party that was being held at the Kathmandu residence of the Nepalese monarchy. The master assailant who'd perpetrated the massacre was later identified as the king's own son, Crown Prince Dipendra, in official reports. After fatally shooting his parents, siblings and other relatives, Dipendra turned the gun on himself. The resulting head wound caused the Crown Prince to slip into a coma. While he was unconscious, Dipendra was declared King of Nepal due to the fact that he'd eliminated those ahead of him in the line of succession. He ultimately spent a total of three days in a hospital before he passed away without ever regaining consciousness. Following Dipendra's death, his uncle, Gyanendra, succeeded him as king. The proliferation of conspiracy theories in the wake of the shooting led to mounting doubts about whether Dipendra had actually been involved or if he'd been framed. Many Nepalese citizens subsequently adhered to the belief that the massacre had been orchestrated by an outside party, perhaps even Gyanendra himself. The Nepalese monarchy lost the respect of the general population following the incident and it was officially abolished in favor of a republican form of government in 2008. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be a royal during the Middle Ages or a middle class civilian today? Let us know in the comments section below.